All right, so in this example, we're going to put an IOU ring on it. So this is a new system call interface in the Linux kernel, and it allows multiple system calls to be queued up and executed asynchronously. So when you think of normal system calls in a normal operating system, it's basically user space calling into kernel space, and kernel space does something for user space. User space is blocked or context switched out, and then eventually when kernel is done, it returns back information to user space. This is a new me mechanism where basically the kernel can go off and do whatever it's going to do and later on get back to user space with whatever information it was requesting. Fundamentally, the reason that this new system was created was for performance. So both uh, reducing the amount of overhead from calling into kernel space from user space and by basically dealing with situations in which kernel space might be blocking, waiting for, you know, for instance, information to come back from a slow spinning disk drive. So there's two fundamental ways that this IOU ring can be used. Either A, user space will queue up a bunch of things and call a single system call to tell the kernel to go ahead and handle these now, or it can queue them up and just wait for a periodic mechanism within the kernel. There's going to be a thread that's going to pull on the queue, and that'll just handle stuff whenever it finds it. So IOU ring is new, and it is subject to frequent changes and frequent bugs. So there's a whole lot of things that have been found uh, very recently, and this is going to be one of them. So just to visualize what's going on here, there was another attack paper, which you can look at later, that provided some nice graphics. So we said user space is going to queue up information into some shared memory that the kernel is going to utilize as well. So this would be the setup to say, dear kernel system, I'm going to be allocating some space for the submission queue and the completion queue, and then these are going to be the submission queue entries. So basically, kernel space sends back a file descriptor, user space uses mmap in order to allocate space for these. Then when user space is queuing things up, it's going to create these submission queue entries, put them in the submission queue, and when everything is queued up, it's going to call IOU ring enter, and that is the system call to kernel space saying, hey, I want you to specifically start chewing on that submission queue kernel space is then going to go ahead and read new submission queue entries and there's two situations that it could occur. So kernel space could have a submission queue entry that is not going to block in which it can just immediately complete. So that would be for instance if you know user space just requested some information that kernel space has readily available and kernel space can just you know get that information put it in the completion queue and be done with it. But in the more common case where, for instance, the kernel may have to go out to some peripheral, then it can't complete it immediately, and so it's going to take that submission queue entry, put it into an asynchronous work queue, and handle that as information becomes available. Eventually, as information is available, the kernel space will write things into the completion queue, so completion queue entries into the completion queue, and user space is able to just periodically check and see if any completion information is available yet. One extra bit of information that's relevant to this particular vulnerability is that there is an optional capability for user space to pre-allocate space for a bunch of buffers for the kernel to return data in. And so basically, instead of having to deal with individual buffers at a time for individual calls, it creates a whole bunch of them, and then the kernel can select them and return the data there. So if the IOU ring up provide buffers option is passed to IOU ring enter, then the kernel basically takes whatever base large allocation that the user space provides, and it breaks it up into many smaller buffers of a size that the uh, user space application indicates, and then it will subsequently return data and it will say, hey, I have placed data in buffer ID zero or buffer ID one. So it breaks it up into a number of IDs and then user space can figure out where exactly it was in that giant buffer that it allocated based on the buffer ID that's returned from the system calls. Now behind the scenes in kernel space, it's important for you to know as you read the upcoming vulnerable code that kernel space will allocate a struct IO buffer one per slice of this larger buffer. So basically this is how the kernel sort of keeps track of, you know, where is the first user space buffer, where is the second, third, fourth, etc. So when you're looking at the code, when you see references to IO buffer structs, the address field of that struct is the user space address that signifies the beginning of a given buffer of this sliced up larger buffer group.
Now furthermore, looking at the IOU ring code can be a bit confusing because there's a whole lot of overloading going on with unions and stuff like that. So we've got, you know, the submission queue, that's where user space is sending the information for the kernel to process. And so there's a submission queue entry, and then, you know, there's the definitions in the code for you to look at, but I'll just provide some clarifying details in the context of when the IO ring op provide buffers option is used. Because it turns out that the interpretation for all of these fields is not uh, necessarily clear in a lot of situations. And while it's one thing to say, well, the union says it can either be a buffer index or a buffer group, and you've got two different names signifying two different things, there's other places like this FD field that it turns out are not at all clear. And so, you know, just based on reading the documentation, and, you know, the documentation could have been wrong here, but based on uh, reading the documentation, it says that, for instance, this FD field, which normally would be a file descriptor, uh, that the IO is going to be done on. It says if using the IO ring op provide buffers, the FD contains the number of buffers in the group. Okay, well, that's kind of not signified anywhere as far as I can tell. Additionally, down here at the adder field, so when you're looking at SQEs, the submission queue entries, and you're pulling the adder field, if you're using this option, then the adder field is the base address of the group, whereas in other cases where you're not using the option, it's the start of an IO vectors array. Also, then we have the length here, which has different interpretations. In our case, when you're using this option, the length is the size of each of those smaller buffers in the buffer group. And in normal usage, it would be the length of the IO vectors array overall. And then down here, we've got the union, where if we're using the option we care about here, the buffer group ID goes right here in buff group. And otherwise, normally, if you were passing in, you know, some fixed set of buffers, this would be saying what index to use. So, you know, you're going to be seeing usages of adder and buff index and buff group and things like that. So you may end up needing to refer back to this in order to, to be clear about what exactly that is supposed to be holding in the specific case where these options are used which is the case that is pertinent to this vulnerability. All right, so as usual, we've got some simplified and sliced down code that's available for you on the website. You're gonna refer to that as your hint about where the vulnerability is. There's also some control flow paths that are relevant to the vulnerability. And so you're going to look at the IO read function and you're going to look at these other hinted functions that I want you to take a closer look at that are all reachable from within IO read. And you want to look for a type confusion vulnerability in here. Is there somewhere that a particular field is being used for multiple types of data?